Unfortunately, we have an image that Islam is about worship. Islam only tells us to pray five times a day, to fast during the month of Ramadan, to go to Hajj and Dil-Hajjah, and that's it. Islam has nothing else to offer. This is the biggest mistake. Islam was the first to speak out for, to speak out against environmental change. Islam was the first to promote preserving the environment, to protect our planet. But we don't know. We think the masses believe that Islam is only promoting pray five times a day, fast, be a good person, and that's it. And if, but if you wanted to ruin the planet, you could ruin the planet. You could do whatever you want. No, this is a mistake. We see Ahlul Bayt, they gave us a lot of guidelines and how to protect and preserve the environment. For example, we have narrations that tell us do not cut trees. Don't cut trees. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was recorded saying, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. لا تقطعوا الثمار فيصب الله عليكم العذاب صبا. Do not cut trees. Do not cut plants. I remember a month and a half ago, I was in California. There were major wildfire fires in California. The president of the United States had an advice: how to get rid of wildfires. Cut the trees. If you cut the trees, no more fires. Can you believe it? To cut the trees? To cut millions of trees? Is this logical? Is this logical advice? Imam Ali alayhi salam, to this degree, he would flip the soil. When he would see old soil, he would flip it. He would bring the fertile soil up on top so that it becomes more fertile. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he would eat a date, he would keep the seed, he wouldn't throw throw away the seed. He would moisten the seed with his mouth and then put it in the ground. And that seed would become a tree. They taught us, instead of cutting trees, they taught us how to plant trees and to take care of the soil, to take care of these trees. Imam Ali alayhi salam says that on the day of judgment, among the things that you will be asked about, let alone our actions, our deeds, we will be asked about even the mountains and animals. What did we do to this mountain? What did we do to this tree? What did we do to these animals? Ittaqullaha fi ibadih, he says. وَبِلَادِهِ فَإِنَّكُمْ مَسْؤُولُونَ حَتَّى عَنِ الْبِقَاعِ وَالْبَهَائِمِ Allah on the Day of Judgment will ask us even about animals. What did we do to animals? Our birds, our cats, our pets will be asked on the Day of Judgment. And on mountains, regarding mountains and and trees, Allah will ask us on the Day of Judgment. What did we do to the environment? Rasulullah would forbid his companions and armies you know, when they, when they would wage a war or fight, and mostly it was defensive battles and wars, they would go to a land and they would fight. Rasulullah, you know, one of the tactics, one of the military tactics, in order to get rid of your enemy, you would pour poison on their land, in their grass. And that poison, it would destroy their lands. It would destroy their plants. It would destroy their trees and agriculture. Rasulullah tell them now. You don't pour poison anywhere. First of all, this is inhumane. Two, why do you punish the environment? Why do you punish the trees and the plants and the vegetables and the fruits for the crimes of human beings? Why? Look at the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Previously, you know, people didn't have toilets. They didn't have bathrooms. Today we have bathrooms. This is a new invention. I remember my father, my father and my parents, they say in Iraq, to take a shower, we didn't have showers at home. We had to go to public showers. Today in every house, there's at least, at least three, four bathrooms and showers. Previously, this didn't exist. So there were teachings where to, to go and, you know. So the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt, they had teachings, there are certain areas that needed to, needed to be avoided. For example, around mosques, around rivers and canals, don't go and, you know, 
perform your hajjah in, in those places. Farms and green areas, avoid those places. Around homes and residential areas. Streets and roads. Running waters. Don't go and relieve yourself in a running water. Or still water. Well, one, this is harmful for others. You'll be harming people. And two, you'll be destroying the environment. We are asked to keep the environment clean. So from that day, Islam was teaching people to be clean and to clean the environment as well. Not just personal hygiene, but cleanliness for the environment as well. One day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi saw one of his companions Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. He saw one of his companions by the name of Sa'd performing wudu with a lot of water. With a lot of water, more than he needs. Rasulullah told him, hold on a second. Why are you using so much water for wudu? You know, I've seen some people, they go to perform wudu, it's like they're taking a shower. You don't need to waste that much Water for wudu. They go, their wudu takes 15 minutes. Why? Wudu takes two minutes. Three minutes maximum. You don't need to spend and wait so much water. And I've seen some people when they go perform wudu, they keep the faucets running. They keep the faucet running. In the winter, they waste hot water. Why? Rasulullah looked on Sa'ad. And he said, لِمَاذَا تُسْرِفْ يَا سَعْدٍ فِي الْمَا Why are you wasting this water? Sa'ad was shocked. He said, وَهَلْ فِي الْمَاءِ إِسْرَافِ Is there wasting of water? Rasulullah said, نَعَمْ وَإِن كُنْتَ عَلَى نَهْرٍ جَارٍ Even if you were on a running river, don't waste that water. SubhanAllah. A running river. A running river, it's not finishing. Don't waste the water. This is resources. You could, be, you could use it for something else. Rasulullah saw a group of children, they would pick out fruits from the tree, they would eat half of it and throw the other half. Rasulullah scolded them, he lectured them. He told them, Subhanallah, in kuntum istagnaytum, fa inna nasalam yastagnu. At'imuh, man yahtaju ilay. If you are full, others are not full, don't throw it away. Even if you eat half of a, half of a fruit, keep the other half. Someone might need it. Someone might eat it. You are full, but others are not full. Islam is against wasting. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, أَدْنَ الْإِسْرَافِ هِرَاقَتْ فَضْلِ الْإِنَاءِ وَإِلْقَاءِ النَّوَةِ He says those who drink half of a cup of water and the other half they pour it. This is wasting. According to Imam Sadiq, this is wasting. You're wasting this water. And also an example of wasting is eating a fruit and throwing the seed. This is wasting. Why throw away the seed? Go and plant it. Go and plant it in your backyard, in your fr front yard. Throwing away a seed? This is wasting. Preserve the environment. Build trees. Make trees. Plant trees. Instead of destroying trees, let's plant trees. It's good for us.